Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, unfortunately, when I went to go edit videos on building the inside of this thing, the audio was just totally garbled. And I thought about trying to voice over those videos, but when I started trying to do it, it's like, I don't remember what I was pointing at. And then I'm pointing at something, I'll be talking about something, and then the pointer goes over to some other part. And it's like, yeah, this is just, I can't, this is too much work. So I'm going to go back and try to show you the wiring on the front end too. But it's the exact same build that I did on my earlier 300B amp. It's wired exactly the same. The schematic's the same. The only thing that's different is the way I'm laying out the power supply, I'm simplifying it, and changing the output transformers. So this isn't like a huge change. And on the power supply, I'm not even sure that that's exactly how I'm gonna do it. I started thinking about that 10 ohm resistor probably needs to be back to that 50 ohm and just eat the whatever loss these transformers have and that's just going to be part of the build. Who knows, I may end up putting a solid state rectifier in it to get to where we need to be, which might work better for a budget build anyway. And if we do end up putting a solid state, you know, replacement thing for the rectifier tube, you might as well just put the diodes inside the amplifier and just get rid of this tube socket and the whole, you know, that may be the way to go. It might be the right pathway for doing a budget amp anyway. So anyway, I'm going to try to do some close-ups of where the wiring's at now. And again, I apologize. I kind of did a whole step-by-step -step thing. And then all those videos were just corrupted or the audio was all corrupted or I don't know what happened. But yeah, it was unusable content or footage. So yeah, let's go dive into this thing and show you how to build this low cost 300 bm okay so let's look at the wiring on the front end tubes and this is going to be basically the exact same wiring we did on our earlier budget 300b which unfortunately wasn't quite as low a price point as i'd hoped and we're trying to hit an even lower price point with this unit so Anyway, this brown wire here is the ground from over at the remote ground point over at the front end of the amp. So we have this ground wire that comes over to this terminal. And then behind here, this ground wire connects to this middle terminal on this tag strip. Okay, and then it travels along and goes to this terminal. And then does the same thing, comes over here and picks up this middle terminal on this far tag strip down here. So the positive wire or the B plus comes to this terminal and then daisy chains over to this terminal. And then we have our decoupling resistor that comes over to this terminal right here. Same thing on this side. And then we have this 47 UF decoupling cap, or these extra filtering for the front end. And it connects from here to ground on both of these. Okay, so we have our plate load resistor that goes from this terminal to here. And then this connects with just a piece of wire to the plate on this triode on this side. So then we have the cathode on this triode connects to the plate of the lower triode. It just has a piece of wire going across the tube socket. And I know this is kind of hard to see with this all populated. And like I said in the start of the video, somehow the audio got all corrupted and Hey, we're here looking at a finished one, trying to point out how everything's wired up. So, the next thing 
is let's start with the lower triode this terminal here on this tag strip has a grid stopper over to the grid of the lower triode which is behind this cap and then again this is the ground so we're going to take the cathode resistor goes from the cathode of the lower triode to this terminal and then we have let me see if I can bend this wire down so you can see that a little better so we have the cathode of this lower triode goes from here to this terminal and then we have the LED that goes from this terminal to ground and that creates the cathode of the lower triode and that sets the bias of the two and then up underneath here there's a one meg resistor that goes from ground to the grid and that's a safety resistor in case the pot goes open it also allows you to test the amp without a potentiometer connected to it now if you were going to build this as a power amp you didn't want to have a volume control you put something like a 250k resistor across here instead of one meg but one meg still works that's all you need to grid leak at 12x7 so let me bend this wire back up there we go. so then the next thing that's kind of unique about the way this tube is set up is it's a cascode and the way a cascode works is it creates a virtual pentode out of two triodes and so again back here you have the the grid you got the plate of the lower triode connected to the cathode of the upper triode and then to control the current running through the upper triode we have this voltage divider connected to the grid of the upper triode so we have one resistor coming from the B plus to the grid and then we have another resistor that goes from the grid to ground and then we have this 22 UF cap that also goes between the grid and ground and then again this is the plate plate load resistor this is where we're going to pull the signal off of the output of the driver tube over to the grid of the 300B tube which sits right there and the same thing on this other side you can see the tag strip we have set up here for the grid of the 300B so that deals with the front end driver tubes of this amp and you can see Let's go scoot over here. Here's our filtering for the B plus. And again, it's 10 ohm I think may be a mistake. I think I'm going to go ahead and go back and use my 50 ohm resistor that I normally use and mount it like over this little area right here. One of those chassis mount wire wound resistors and that'll give us a little more filtering for our B plus we lose a little B plus voltage but that's okay I don't think it's gonna be the end of the world so finally I'm going to show you in this video how I'm getting the 300 B filaments wired up and this is our 5 volt regulator okay and then I showed you earlier that the bridge rectifiers are mounted in the back of the amplifier and these twisted wires here are coming from the bridge rectifiers in the back of the amp and this is our DC that's coming into our voltage regulator it's a 5 volt regulator we've got our two caps one of them across the input one of them across the output of the 5 volt regulator this is mounted with these heat sinks here and it's got thermal paste with an insulator and then another little insulating washer under the bolt and then I've sanded down the powder coating so that this heat sink can 
transfer some heat to the chassis too to keep this regulator cool down and then these are the outer pins are the voltage in that's the positive that's the negative the negative just comes straight through and then this is the positive off the regulator it goes to the pins on the filaments of the 300b tube and then we pull them over here the next thing I need to do is wire some 50 ohm resistors over to this point and this is going to be where we pull the signal off of the cathode to go to our cathode resistor to ground to set the bias for the tube and then the grid's going to come over here to this terminal here we're going to put a grid leak resistor across here and then this is going to be connected to ground but I'll show you all that in a future video and then the other side is just a mirror of the same thing we've got our regulator over here and then we've got the wires coming up now one thing I wanted to show you let me zoom out to get this one of the things I do is I wire these in reverse of each other and by that I mean on this tube this pin is positive and on this tube this pins positive and what that does is you can rotate the tubes from one socket to the other and it will reverse the voltage going across the filament which will help extend the life of the output tubes and so that's just a little trick i do when i'm wiring up dc heaters on a 300b so that kind of covers what we've done since the last video and let me get the two resistors that form the virtual cathode and then get the cathode resistors mounted on the top of the amp and I'll show you wiring up the output tubes and then we'll be done with this amp. Well hopefully that was enough for you to see kind of what's going on with this amp and how to build one of these if you want to do it like showing you how I wired up the bridge rectifiers and again we did a very step-by-step -step build of my other budget 300b which ended up not being that budget by the time you add up all the parts and this is trying to hit a lower price point and so if you go watch those videos they'll give you a lot of clues about how to wire up the front end and all that stuff and you know most of that is the same the only thing that's going to be really different is the power supply and it was done trying to save some money so getting pretty close I want to get this thing ready to power up and then see where the B plus is we're gonna play around with the RC filter may end up putting the 50 ohm resistor back in the power supply we need to measure the ripple especially the ripple on the output and make sure that that's you know in a tolerable range and I've really been thinking about this initially I was building this as a prototype to build this price point of an amp and I decided this isn't something that I really want to do with my Skookie badge on it. I feel like that if you're at this price point this is a 300B amp just to say you've got a 300B amp and I know that my 2A3 amp is going to sound better and it's not that much this is probably going to cost as much as the 2a3 amp did by the time you get in all the dc heaters and all that stuff that you have to have with the 300b tube and yeah if you're going to hit that price point i would buy the 2a3 amp and so trying to find a 300b amp that will occupy the same price point as the 2a3 amp that i sell that i know sounds fantastic doesn't make any sense to me and so well i do doing this one for the channel for you folks that wanted to diy something like this and i'll probably sell this prototype when i'm done i'm not going to be building these as a product i think i'm going to focus more on a higher end 300b build if i'm going to be doing 300b amps because the tubes are expensive and just the, the complication of the circuit it really needs to have those fc30 tango transformers and all the stuff to make it a really top shelf 300b amp and not cripple it like we're doing with this budget one trying to hit a price point and so 
anyway, I am going to finish this project up. We'll finish the video up. You know, we'll do some testing on this thing and do some listening tests. I'll be shocked if my 2A3 amp doesn't sound better. I just, yeah, I just, I'll be shocked. And so I think that's kind of what we're going to do with the production models is we're going to have a 2A3. That's this current one with the Haybrewer transformers and all that stuff because they've got nice low DCR and all that stuff that really makes the amp sound good. And if you want a budget 300B amp, go buy a Rysong A50 and do my mods to it and just be happy with that. So anyway, hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, Please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters and other folks that support the channel, buying my products and, you know, making donations at the website and all that kind of thing. And for watching my videos, that helps a lot too. It makes all this worth doing. If y'all didn't watch the videos, I wouldn't be making them. So until the next time, have a nice day.